Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Animation Trends event, and thank you for joining the session. So my name is Lisa Feigl. I'm the enterprise rep here at Toonboom, and we invited Lindsay Noller to showcase the world's most strongest and flexible arm. All right, Lindsay, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, Lisa. Uh, nice to see you again. Um, yeah, I am a Toon Boom Harmony rigging specialist and animation trainer and a pipeline consultant. And I'm excited to be here. Nice. We are excited to have you. All right. So do you want to tell us a little bit about what you're going to be doing in the session today? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I am going to be showing off one of my first tutorials that I'll be releasing into the wild, uh, the wild internet. Um, so we're going to go through this. I was so excited to be invited to, to be here today. Um, but with the limitation of one hour, I kind of had to figure out what to do uh, in that time. So I figured I would take you through the steps of creating the world's strongest, most flexible arm um rig <laughs> and getting people used to the network that's usually the first step of harmony rigging um and one of my favorite things to do so yeah i'll take you through a couple of the easy steps and show you how to use this tutorial okay uh, and then you can be off to creating your own your own little rig awesome i'll let you get started and then i'll probably ask you a couple questions along the way all right, cool. Uh, so I used to work for Toon Boom, and one of my favorite things uh, and ways to show people how to use the software was creating little playgrounds. So this is uh, my first playground that I'll be sharing. Um, and it's basically to get you comfortable with starting a rig um, from, from the beginning to the end, uh, getting it to animate. So uh, I'll show you the quick steps. Uh, because we only have an hour, um, I'm going to be jumping through the steps a little bit differently, but if you wanted to follow along or rig along, um, you can definitely do that, and I'll show you how to do that as well. So I believe I'm already sharing my screen, right? Yes. All right. So the first step um, is to maybe read the instructions if you're opening the scene by yourself. I'm going to skip over the instructions specifically so that we can kind of get into it. Um, and the goal here is to kind of use the video and the tutorial um, together uh, so that you can do this at your own pace in your own home. Um, and the first thing is to really bring in your reference. So now I've already done that in this scene. And so I've pulled in two pictures from the internet um, and just a basic arm. Like this is just very, very basic, uh, but it's gonna be very flexible. You'll be able to do so much with it. Yeah, yeah. So the first frame is just um, uh, an arm outstretched and we're gonna go, we're gonna go here. <laughs> and get it into the strong pose. So what I've done is just imported the two images and sign, size them up so that they kind of line up and that's gonna be the basis of the design of the rig. Okay. Um, so from here, when you're creating a rig, uh, one of the important things is creating clean joints. So I have a little um, drawing node right here uh, to basically go in and draw your circles and create your pivot points. So I'm just going to use my hotkey and bring up a circle, whoop, wrong key, uh, so that it stays in perfect condition. Um, and from here, you want to create your center point. So when you select your circle, you can see that there's like a temporary little pivot point there, and don't mind the armpit hair, but I'm going to zoom in, <laughs> and if you hit B, it's gonna temporarily create a little brush, and you can create uh, this perfect center. Okay. So the goal from here is to create one for every joint. So you've got one for the shoulder, one for the elbow, you wanna make it fit. I think I've got my snapping turned on, so it's Gonna, and uh, to speed things up a little bit. Okay. But the nice thing about this is I've created it once and then I just created it and copied it over. Um, and you wanna, you wanna do this in a way that your circles are, you want that pivot point to really mimic your the bones in your body. So your shoulder joint, your elbow joint, and your wrist. 
I find that when you're working with humans, it's really easy because we're human. <laughs> and most of the time we know how our bodies work. So you can kind of use yourself as a reference. You have live so reference at all times. So that makes it a little okay. bit easier than creatures. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to deactivate that real quick and just jump over to my to my finished circles because these, these I have them lined up perfectly. Okay. Um, and you can see that they kind of they're kind of skimming the edge of the design. Um, I know it's a live model. Actual pieces. Um, and so with rigging, what it is is uh, we're taking all these pieces and we're creating these like movable parts. So we want to make sure that when pieces are in motion, um, they're filled in and there's no gaps. And when there's gaps, we call that breaking in the animation. So we want to, that's our job. We prevent as much breaking as possible. It's impossible to prevent all the breaking, but we do our best. So in step two, um, we're going to get you used to using groups as well. Let me bring open these two. So I have, uh, I've created three drawings here and the shortcut to do that is um, control R. So here, and you can just hit upper arm, lower arm, hand, uh, add, you'd, you'd hit add. And then when you're ready to close the window, you can hit add and close. I'm just gonna hit okay. close. So you got your three parts uh, here and then connected by the, the joints. Yeah, okay. yeah. And so we're going to be, we're gonna be taking the artwork that's from our circles layer. And we're actually gonna be copying, whoop, let me turn these on. We're gonna take these circles, just the circles, we're not gonna take the, and we're gonna bring them into our upper arm artwork, uh, but also our lower arm artwork and our hand, did I copy that face? Uh, and then we're gonna delete what we don't need. So our hand, we only need the wrist. The lower arm, we only need the lower arm pieces. And then the upper arm, we only need the upper arm. So we've got, now we've got the three, I'm gonna change this color real quick, uh, just so that we get something that's a little bit more noticeable. Uh, so now we've got the three pieces and we're gonna, I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna jump over to the next one pretty soon. But from here, what we're gonna do, what I do is I take, I'll start in the upper arm. And this is the way that I like to create closed shapes because I wanna trace this arm piece by piece. And I want my circle on the outside to be as close to a circle as possible. So on the inside, I'm gonna use, whoop, I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna grab one of these contour points and just cross over. And when I select everything and flatten the artwork, I can now delete these two pieces. And if I jump over to my tool properties, if I flatten them and heal them, now I've got one shape. So when I delete some of these contour points, I can really start to and add a couple more contour points. I can start to really trace this section. And so the goal is to do this tracing for each for each piece. And again, I'm gonna jump through. I think that's pretty good actually. So I've got my upper arm. I'm gonna do that again for my lower so arm. This is usually something that you uh, would see riggers do, or is that something that's done at different parts uh, by, by another team? Uh, this would be the rigging stage, yes. yes. So this is what it looks like to break down a design uh, into like a like puppet pieces so that the animator can bring the rigs to life. Okay, because the designs, the reference you have now is a picture, but it could have been a uh, you know, a drawing or a rough sketch uh, that someone brought yes. in or that sent you. Yes, yeah, I'm using a live, uh, a live drawing, a live model from uh, the Google internet, internet. Just for quick, just for quick access. Um, and again, most, most, uh, if you if you notice, the the model's not the same. So an arm is an arm. So I just grabbed two pictures that were really similar. An arm is an um, arm. I guess it's a nice way of showing, you know, you can grab reference from anywhere. <laughs> okay, awesome. Uh, when you're stuck. Um, so I'm gonna jump over to the next section here. Um, with this tutorial, 
Uh, I've got a, we'll be working with groups. So we'll be jumping in and out of groups. Um, so there's a note about groups and like how to use them inside the inside of the file. But if all you have to do is um, control shift G will create the group and then you can use uh, the pieces on the inside. Uh, you can, if you're rigging along here with this video, you can rig inside of this group and use the steps as like reference. You don't have to move through the file the way that I'm gonna move through the file. Um, but, but yeah, this is, so you can either rig everything here or follow along with me. I'm gonna be following along. Uh, doo -doo -doo. So once you've got everything traced, let me make sure I deactivated the last one. Activate. Once you have everything traced from here, um, we can actually bring our artwork into the separate layers. So this is this is what's really important with um, uh, rigging is that everything is very structured. Everything kind of has a place. Uh, there are specific rules. We're not going to be able to cover all the rules right now, but I am going to show you exactly how little things work. So we can take the artwork that we've just created and we can copy it. And over here, I have my art layers. So I can bring in my artwork to the art layers. So my overlay layer is going to always be for details. And this is something that I rig, but it's a very standard way of rigging. I, I probably should have mentioned that at the beginning. Um, but this is something that if we delete the ends and just leave the inside, then we're left with something that's called um, a detail. So this is what's going to give our arm a lot more flexibility than just a standard arm um, in general. So I'm gonna leave this here and I'm gonna create some nice tapered lines. And the way I like to create my tapered lines is I just pinch towards the inside and round them off. So like so. And so you can't really see these lines. They're actually hidden. And because I've just copied and pasted, they're hidden directly inside of the actual the line art of the artwork. So let's see, let's go back. So I'm in my upper arm, my line art is there. And the last thing that I need to do is bring my color art uh, and create a fill. So let me find my color, bring it to the skin color, my skin tone. Uh, sometimes I like to use Muppet colors. So I actually like to use brighter colors, but we'll follow the, we'll follow the model for now. Um, and basically we're just gonna do this for all the pieces. So each piece gets the overlay, the line art and the color art. And this is gonna make more sense in the next step. Okay. But doo -doo -doo. Uh, we're gonna jump over to the finished piece. So I'll show you. You were saying rig along before. Is that something that you do often or that we can do with you at another time? Yeah, so my rig along, I have a rig along special on Twitch, um, which I do every Tuesday at 4 to 6 p.m. EST, <laughs> Eastern time, uh, standard time. And so, yeah, I basically go on Twitch and for two hours a week, I am rigging live. Um, I think it's really important to kind of see things done done in, in real time, because uh, I think there's a little bit of a misunderstanding about how long it takes to either learn how to rig or rig something in general. Um, so mm -hmm. I like to do everything in real time. I like to make a lot of mistakes. I fix the mistakes on air. Oh, <laughs> I like to good. embarrass myself. <laughs> and it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun. Okay, yeah. All right, I'll let you mm -hmm. get back to it. So we have three pieces now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I have all three pieces and each piece, um, we have our detail line, our line art and our color art. And I'll just quickly run through all three and we get the hand. So same thing, we have our detail line. And again, this the detail line is really what's gonna give our character um, like the, the pop of flexibility. And when you see everything on top, it's not gonna look like much just yet to the next to the next step. All right, so after you have all of your drawings and they are um, separated into their individual layers, I'm gonna hide my circles for a quick second. 
I'm going to jump over. Uh, step three and step four are interchangeable. Um, I like to do my, I like to create my engineering before I add my pegs. However, you can add your pegs if it helps you with your engineering. Um, I do not do it in that order because I tend to delete my pegs um, just to make sure that there's no artwork uh, that's been moved or translated across the scene in any way. Okay. So I always like to keep my artwork exactly where it is and then I engineer what I can see then I add my pegs and kind of test it. Um, so that's my process, but you can add your pegs before you do your engineering. But I'm gonna stick to my method today. Uh, and I'm gonna jump here. So again, this is the first The first group is, has all the pieces that are drawn. Um, but if you, when you jump into the group, I've already entered and added my art layers. So these are the art layers. So I put all of my layers inside my groups or inside my nodes, um, everything that's here, we're now going to set up in the network so that um, it's, what's, I don't wanna say the word relevant, it's um, it's the same, it's, uh, hmm, there's a word that I'm consistent? missing. Hmm. It'll, hmm, yes, that will take that one, yes, it's consistent. <laughs> consistent in the node view, consistent in the camera view. Uh, and so, and, and we're gonna get specific. Uh, when we start to rig, it's, it's really about being very specific about what it is that you're doing. And, and that's kind of what becomes harder for people to, to really translate into the skills. So I guess that's my hope with this um, tutorial. It's like to bring in the, the pattern and that recognition of like how to approach almost every problem. It's, it's very similar. So you're always drawing, you're always uh, creating your pivot points, you're always creating your engines. Uh, then you're creating your pegs, deformers, and then you're testing your animation. Um, so that's kind of the goal here. But I'll show you how I bring these in um, just by hitting enter, which is my favorite tool for Harmony, uh, the node search. And then I can just type in overlay. So over overlay. Um, they come in and they I have already have these colors saved as a preset. So I will go in and color. Uh, color them like this, and you can see that they're saved here. But I basically just pick them from my color selectors. Cancel. Close. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Whoops. Delete. Delete. <laughs> uh, doo -doo -doo. And from here, what I'm going to show you is my upper arm. If I plug in all four of these. So something like this, you can see that I have all four of these nodes plugged in. I have an extra node, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but this is doing the exact same thing as this one node right here with its one single stream. Um, and it's basically because the overlay and the line art, the color and the underlay, they all kind of are represented right here, but they're all like right on top of each other inside uh -huh. the node view. So this, these four connections is the doing the exact same thing as this one connection. It's just that now we have the flexibility to get in there and that's what's gonna give us the flexibility to like really engineer things. Okay. So I'm gonna show you uh, the next step as I actually like to take these nodes here and I group them and then it becomes a little bit more organized for the network. So this is where we're, this is where we're heading. Um, inside of this group, and I'm gonna delete this composite and I'm just gonna make sure that my auto patch is in the middle uh, because this feature right here is a little bit of a mix of the line art and the color art. So I like to keep it in the middle. Um, these are called multi-ports. So these are a port, a port out. So I like to do that. So this one right here in the middle is my uh, auto patch. And again, we're gonna use that very soon. Uh, but all four of these connections are now doing the same thing inside this one group as it would if I was doing this and pulling them individually. So instead of having this network be so wide, I can now take this group and connect it right here and here. But now my network's about to get a lot smaller. You can see that 
there's a lot more things that kind of fit. It does look a lot cleaner, yeah. It looks a lot cleaner. And so as long as you can remember that it's the order, and the order you can see right here is your, uh, your overlay, your line art, your color art, and your underlay um, with your auto patch in the middle. It's very easy to remember, and I'm going to jump into my next group for my next, for my next uh, thing. And you can see here, I've, I've already done this, but here I've named them. So in this group, I've got my overlay, my line art, my auto patch, my color art, and my underlay. And I'm actually going to... So you have the color coding and the uh, naming convention that kind of helps in this case. Yeah, and the color coding is actually an older um, an older method because uh, we didn't use the groups before. Um, so we would we would have all those color coded nodes because um, when we were zoomed out of the network, we could actually I don't know if you can see it through the camera, but you could actually kind of see bit. what node was doing which. So you actually didn't have to be so close. So the color coding really that was probably a really big game changer for for rigging in the industry in general. I'm I'm sure that that would probably be something that people really uh, relate to. Um, but from here, we're going to start building our arm. So, so mm -hmm. what we're doing now is we can pull all these pieces out individually and we can start to build. So I'm going to pull out the color pieces, which is going to be the fourth node. And I'll do one. I'll do one at a time. Uh, and when you're doing this part, the engineering, um, it's best to be in the camera tool, the transform tool. You don't want to do engineering while you're in a drawing tool uh, because you might you might miss some things. <laughs> you won't be okay. looking at your you won't be looking at your your character or the thing that you're rigging um, through the camera. You'll be looking at it through that one drawing. So okay. you might miss some things. So you want to always jump out and, and use your transform tool when you're in the this stage of the process. But I'm going to plug in my color art and I'm going to plug in my line art. Uh, and then I'm going to plug in my overlay. And I'm going to do that for all three of the pieces. So my overlay, my line art, and my color art. And I'll do that for the hand. So the overlay, the line art, and the color art. And so now we have uh, this view and you can see that there's like some overlapping lines, which we don't technically want. That's not flexible. It still kind of looks like a puppet. Um, so I'm going to bring in an extra tool and this is going to be the cutter. And we're basically going to use the pieces that are in the rig to cut the other pieces, the, the pieces that are next to it. And this is what's going to start to create that illusion of like depth and um, uh and it's one arm and not three pieces kind of. Yeah, exactly. Together. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So they'll all work together. So uh, the thing that you can see that we need to cut uh, is basically the, the line. And so we know the line, the full solid outline is on the line art layer. So the way a cutter works is we're just going to hook up this cutter to the line art. And I can do that for all three pieces, all three copy view, they're all going to be the same. So I'll bring them out a little bit. Like this. And then uh, we're going to cut them one by one, with the exception that uh, one of them will need to be cut several times. But our, our upper upper arm, and you can see when I'm grabbing, uh, what did I grab? I grabbed this cutter and you can actually see here the differences between the layers. So you can see Here's my my detailed and my my overlay, my full line, and then the color that's hiding behind it. And that auto patch that I mentioned earlier, this is where it comes into play. So our auto patch is a very, very specific tool. And I like to call it, I like to make sure that it's a tool. It's not artwork, it's a utility. Um, and it basically is the tool that gives us the, the depth that we're looking for. So when we take the auto patch from, like if we're cutting our upper arm here, uh, it's connected to the lower arm. This is when I like to start singing that song. The upper arm's connected to the lower arm. <laughs> the lower arm connected to the hand <laughs> and the upper arm. <laughs> so you, now we're gonna pull the pieces, we're gonna pull the auto patches from the pieces that are connected and we're gonna cut the piece that we're trying to cut. So we're cutting the upper arm and we're gonna pull the auto patch from the lower arm because it's connected. 
So just like that. So there we go. Uh, and we're going to do the same thing. So I'll jump over here to make this one easy. Uh, we're going to cut this piece right here. The hand is going to cut the lower arm. So we're going to take the auto patch from the hand and bring that over to here. And now we're not totally done, um, but we're halfway there. So right now my hand is not being cut and I don't have any, this is, this is where I was saying like, sometimes people want to add pegs. I will delete these after, but if I bring that hand forward, uh, it breaks my flex of my ultimate flexibility. So I want, I want to make sure that my hand is uh, also connected to my lower arm. And so now I've got my hand can go in front and behind. And I'll delete my peg. And then here, we're gonna do one more. So we got the lower arm. If I bring my lower arm forward, uh, you can see that it also needs to be cut by the upper arm because your lower, your lower arm is sandwiched between these two pieces. So I'm gonna add a composite and the composite's gonna help me uh, use the, grab the two things to cut the one. So do, 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 control H. And I'm gonna run that through the mask section. And now my auto patch is gonna cut the upper arm, cut the lower arm by the upper arm. And now uh, this, what we've done is we very quickly, very easily easily have, have created um, a, an X network or a cross network uh, or a seamless limb. Um, this is what gives us our ultimate flexibility. So now I can, do whatever, bring these forward, bring them backwards. But I, I know those lines are there, but doo -doo -doo. that's it. So we're gonna jump over now to our next thing. We're gonna create our pegs, control deactivate. And we're actually almost done, almost about halfway through. All right, so activate. So here I've got my network, it's already been created. Um, creating pegs is really easy. Uh, this is where I find it to be a little more meditative. Um, if you select all three of your drawings, you can hit Control Alt P um, and that'll give you a peg for each drawing and you always wanna have a peg for each drawing. Um, and then we're gonna create, uh, which is why Harmony is so powerful, we're gonna create the hierarchy in the network. If you've ever heard that sentence, we're gonna do that here. Okay. So I'm gonna create um, a peg that controls the whole arm. And then I'm gonna create a, like a lower arm peg, which I don't know why we never call it elbow, <laughs> but we're gonna basically create an elbow peg, but I always call it a, a lower arm main. Um, I think it's just cause I'm cheating and creating less typing for myself. Uh, okay. And then we're just gonna connect everything. So the again, you can sing that song, the lower arm is connected to the hand. <laughs> So we're gonna connect it. And then the upper arm is connected to the lower arm. So now this is how you jump up a hierarchy. So you can just hit P or B. B is how you jump up the hierarchy. So we got one from the hand to the whole entire lower arm to the whole entire arm. Uh, but we still have enough pegs that we can, we can get in there and, and move things individually. So that's step one. Uh, and the second step is to name them properly. Um, you always want to avoid, this is probably um, a lot of people's pet peeves, it's not just mine, <laughs> uh, but these double these double pegs, these double P's, uh, when you get into a, a place where you're adding a whole bunch of P's, oh, you, can I see see, what you, mean. you can see that there's this, uh, and when you jump into the, the top, where is it, in the, in the, the timeline you can see there's all these p's so you want to avoid this this is something that we don't we don't want to get into um, makes it difficult to navigate the the timeline so we'll rename these properly upper arm so we can call it a main peg so you got your or your arm it's not your upper arm anymore it's the whole arm uh, and then we've got our lower arm main peg you've got for now the spelling so that helps to prevent just uh, a lot of the uh repetition that you were saying yeah and just like um a lot of times sometimes there's like scripting involved with studios so depending on what their tools are like to 
uh, like how you would name that specific hierarchy peg that holds a couple things. Mm -hmm. There's scripts that'll actually, you can actually hit like a hotkey and it'll jump to that peg. So okay. instead of hitting BBB to go up the hierarchy, there's, you know, you can, you can, if that studio has got those scripts, you can actually jump and skip keys. So it's, it's kind of okay. handy. Uh, but yeah, renaming your pegs is a really, really good um, habit to fall into. Probably one of, as a rigging artist, number one habit. Uh, do, do, do. Maybe I'll I'm ask doing you it about way. habit number hmm? two and three. I'll ask you about habits number two and three for rigging artists later. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, all right. So we'll jump into the next. Oh, no. I think I'm going to set these pegs, actually. So this is um, a very easy, very easy way to do it. We're going to bring our circles back. This is this is why we created these circles with the pivot points uh, location. So we know where the center points are. So we can jump and we can grab all of our, our pegs and then using this tool right here, which is the rotate tool, uh, we can actually grab, you can grab all of them or you can just grab the ones that you want. But what I like about grabbing all of them is you can move them all at once. So you really want to have clean joints uh, when you are doing rigging. And so these circle joints are really, um, like perfecting these circle joints are, is like your first defense. Uh, the first thing that you you really want to get good at. So now, because I've selected all my pegs, they are all in that location, which is kind of nice because now I can just travel down the hierarchy and I can bring them where I need them to go. So now my lower arm and then I can go to the hand. And now I've set all my pegs. Mm -hmm. So now when I rotate my arm, it's going to work a little bit more like an arm. And I can't see the magic right now of that flexibility that I've promised, but uh, we're one step closer. Okay. We're one step closer. And when I hide my circles, uh, now you can see it. So, doo, doo, doo. so now you can really see like if the character was waving or, you know, stop, <laughs> you can start to see, I can bring it forward um, using alt up and down keys. I can, I can bring it forward, bring it backwards. Um, I can reset uh, and it gives me that really nice look of, you know, that nice little detail right here. This is really what gives your your Z depth, your your character um, really creates a, really brings them alive. This is a really a really crucial detail uh, for most studios. And the next step uh, to give it that extra layer of flexibility is we're going to add deformers. And again, if you can see all of the the writing in these. Um, the backdrops, uh, all of the instructions are in here. So how to add your deformers, where to put the deformer points, all that is also listed inside these backdrops. So doo -doo -doo, let's jump, let's jump in here. And I'm gonna quickly create uh, some deformers for one, uh, for both of these, the hand doesn't need a deformer, but the upper arm and the lower arm does. And I'm gonna quickly just hide, I'm gonna deactivate these two so I can focus on the one. And I'm gonna show you how to create the best uh, deformers for like this piece. And do, do, do. I'm gonna unplug the line art. And what that does is it shows me where my details are. And so your deformer pieces, you really want to, them to be lined up specifically with these details because that's what's gonna give you, when you go in there and create new animations, you'll have control over that line. And when they're misaligned, it's a lot harder to control. So this is how you get a perfect setup okay. for, um, for that artwork. So I'm gonna jump back here and go into my, this is the hammer tool, the rigging tool. And under my tool properties, bring up my, uh, envelope mode. And so uh, I could just do four, uh, four pieces, but it would be not enough. Um, and you want to have a little bit more control when you're doing a, an arm like this. So it's actually six. So we're going to plant the root um, somewhere in the middle so that it's hidden in the shoulder. And then we're just going to trace the character, the pieces, 
And I'm going to create one more in the middle here. And those will act as anchors. And I'll, I'll show you what that means in a minute. And so we can clean this up, make this as close to your artwork as possible. Um, you can you always want to like kind of dive in and make sure that your your deformer points are are lined up and matching because again that's what you want to have um, clean. If it was like this, it would be if you weren't paying attention and you were trying to oops, not that one this one. If you wanted to to do this by eye, it's really easy to miss. It's really really easy to miss and make that mistake. So it's best to just unplug the line art, line it up really nicely okay to be able to, sit to see exactly what you're doing there yeah okay and the ones that are in the middle are basically just like points that stop this on like this side of the arm from interfering with this side of the arm okay. so it gives again it just gives you an extra layer of control and i want to make sure that my deformer points are kind of they're in thirds. I like to work in thirds. So like this handle is almost the same length as the space, which is almost the same length as uh, this handle. And you can see that I kind of work in thirds uh, for the most part. And I'm going to jump to the next, I'm going to jump to the next one. I'm going to remember to plug that back in, but I'm going to jump to the next group because I have my deformers finished. Mm -hmm. And you can see in my upper arm and lower arm, let me just turn this on. I've got my, my handles uh, or my deformers set up here. And I've got my deformers set up here. And so if I wanted to like make this, um, if I wanted to make this like arm, this fist here, I can pull this up and just kind of work with the deformers to kind of uh, get something as close as possible. So if I wanted to kind of shape this muscly, muscly arm, arm. So this is the strongest arm. So here, I can bring this back down, rotate it. So now I've kind of got my, oh, I forgot to take out my, forgot to set the keys, <laughs> jumping networks. But uh, I've got one finished. Do, 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 do. Let me reset these. There we go. It feels there like we're there. Oh, there we go. Yeah. It Almost feels like we're very yeah. close. <laughs> so when you are totally done and you wanted to compare, you could. We, I could have done my animation in, in this one as well. Uh, but when you're totally done, uh, when it's totally done, I have an example here. This is the one that is finished. Oh, what do we got here? Uh, and actually, if you uh, go to frames, I think it's 10 to 20, unless I moved it to 20 to 30, I did. And so here, let me, let me jump down to my timeline. So I've got a little animation here that's already done, but what I've done, is I've actually, <laughs> I promise you the strongest arm. <laughs> oh, it's nice. so this is a very flexible, very strong arm. Um, and in this case, what I actually did is I, I tied the deformer. I, I cheated and I created an, an extra deformer. Uh, is it cheating or does it, does it save you time? Uh, curve point. Uh, depends on the situation. In this case, um, it's not cheating, but it's a great, it's a little trick. <laughs> Okay. So in this case, I've tied the rotation to that muscle. Um, uh, and so that's what's causing, that's what's giving us the strong arm. <laughs> so this is actually done with scripting uh, in the back ends of the program. But okay. uh, when you learn the front end, when you get through all these tricks and you get comfortable there, then you get to play uh, with some of the rules like that and start breaking, breaking nice. the rules. So where did you learn to script or where would you go to find more scripts like that? Oh, I'll be honest, uh, scripting, I'm not sure where you would find exactly where you would find that information. Probably if I had to go looking for scripts, 
I would probably go and look at your uh, your Discord channel, and I'd probably snoop around there. I know there's a lot of um, people on there that script, so I might I might reach out and ask somebody. That nice. scripting uh, nice. in particular is is a is a different type of a skill. Yes, I, do I think we know, have a. I only know the yeah, we have a scripting channel. I know there's a couple TDs there, so that's always a good resource. Okay, well, that's good. And it's awesome to see what it was able to do on your arm there, the strongest arm. All right. Mm -hmm. So I'll let you get mm -hmm. through to the next step. Tutorials. Uh, there's something there that you can kind of play with. and. Sorry, was that a question? Oh, you're muted. Uh, you'll be able to get through to the next step, and then uh, and then I might have a couple questions. But it seems like we're almost there. I really like the illustration at the end. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just a little fun, uh, a fun surprise. I think that that's important. Uh, to enjoy what you're doing and uh no matter what stage you're at you have to you have to know that you can do it and um i think that this is a fun way a fun way for people to kind of explore the program yeah. uh and i'll and i'll i'll mention it here it's in it's in the x sheet so it will be in the pro it will be in the program but it's in the x sheet and if you scroll all the way over there's an expression and this is, this is where we get a little more advanced. This is not something that you need to do in this tutorial. It's literally just there for morale. Okay. Uh, but this is, this is the script <laughs> right there. So that's how you find the script. It's under the expressions, but this tutorial will not teach you how to add expressions. So. That's fair. <laughs> there's, there's other tutorials for that. Um, yes. Okay. What else, uh, what else uh, do you recommend for morale? What do you like about rigging? Um, what do I, I, you know what I like uh, about rigging is that it feels like nothing is ever, it's rare that something's the same. Um, like when you build an arm like this, this is what I like about this arm is it's just a really good base uh, to build things onto it. Um, when you get into rigging and you get to work with character designs, um, you're really bringing those character designs to life. Like the animators will bring them to life, but you're giving it to the ability. So what I love about rigging is like looking for those small details and like, how do I bring life to this character? Like, how am I gonna see that the animator can bring life to this character? Because if the animator sees something that I don't and I don't give them that ability, mm. then you know, we can miss bits. But like, there's a lot, like a lot of the little details when you're watching cartoons, that's, that's really where the magic is. So I like to bring and put as much of that out there uh, as possible when working in cartoons. That's definitely my favorite part. Nice. The little details. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you said there was one, well, we had one kind of recommendation for rigs. What are, I guess, your top three uh, pieces of advice for anyone who who's rigging? Top three pieces of advice. Uh, clean networks. That's a big one. Um, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Uh, rigging is all about making mistakes and fixing your mistakes and, um, and just getting comfortable uh, learning what those mistakes are teaching you. That's, that's what rigging is. And I find that that's probably, probably the thing that stops people, um, or holds them back because that they're, there's still a bit of fear to, to get into that node view, um, because they don't want to make a mistake. But I think that that's where all the mistakes, that's the mistakes are where the magic is. So I'd say get in there, get your hands dirty, uh, which is why I'm using groups, which is why I'm setting it up like this. Uh, to kind of help people navigate through because if you can get comfortable in this tutorial, you're going to be very, very comfortable um, working within node, node views and networks and getting into bigger and bigger scenes. Um, the third thing, what else? Uh, clean networks, clean drawings. You want to watch out for like digital clutter. You don't want to have too many contour points. Um, too many deformer deformer points. This might be considered too many deformer points in a in a weird way. Um, what else? Uh, That's a good start. I feel like I, that one I'm almost on the spot for, <laughs> and I feel like I talk <laughs> about it most. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, okay. Did you? Yeah, did you learn the most? Hmm. Yeah. No, sorry. I guess afterwards you can kind of tell us like all those mistakes. Do you find you you made most of those in school, or was it? Uh, Afterwards, was it kind of a mix? 
of how you learned to, to get through it? Every mis every mistake I made was on the job. <laughs> Good to know. And that, that's where you make the mistakes. That's, yeah. Uh, we didn't learn too much rigging in school. Um, and when I learned rigging, ten like it was like 10 years ago, there really was no, there was nothing online. Um, and so it was ask the person next to you uh, and figure it out for yourself and uh, hit your quota by Friday. You want to be you want to be home. That's <laughs> fair. Home. Yeah, yeah. So that's very motivating. Okay. What do you do? I guess in your free time. Well, now you you kind of have a, a whole uh, practice that you're you're putting together to be able to learn on the spot. Well, what would you recommend for an artist who wants to train? Uh, himself or herself and to get better to the, get to the next days? Um, I think that uh, first of all, Toon Boom has a, like everything that Toon Boom puts out is, is fantastic. Um, there's such a plethora of information now. It's really about getting comfortable, almost finding people that um, are, are kind of close to you. Like you almost want to find people that are in your area um, to be hired. If that makes sense, like you want to find the industry that's kind of similar to to where you are. So I'm in North America, um, but I think that this rigging is pretty, it's still pretty standard outside of North America as well. There's definitely different types of rigging methods. I'm not going to yeah. say it's the standard, but you can still find it out there. Um, but I would say you want to like really know what's happening in your area because that's what's going to get you a job. Um, if that makes sense, like, so you really want to know, like, kind of who's closest to you so that you're rigging in their style. Um, but yeah. if you don't, if you're not sure about that stuff, I think that this is a really great way to learn. Um, and like I said, Toon Boom has, I know Toon Boom has courses. I'm going to be starting to do tutorials. Um, I also have drop in clinics. So I know a lot of things that are happening around the world. So if you have a problem with rigs, uh, with your rig and have a question you can always drop into my clinic um and then i can help you on the spot and and help you problem solve and kind of guide you in that direction you'd be able um, to help me on a rig i created or was it something that you showed me yeah it'd be something that you created or you could even be doing the stuff that i'm doing i everything that i make i put out um online it's all on my on my website and on gumroad so everything that I create will go out there. And so if you're working on rigs that I've already created or creating your own rig, you can bring that into my clinic and um, I'll help you with that mm -hmm, to okay. give you the best okay. information. Mm -hmm. Let me go create a rig and then I'll come and see you. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so I guess you've been in the industry for a while, but is there something that you would recommend to people who are new to the industry or someone who would like to become a rigger? Like how to get into the career? Yeah. Uh, I would say rigging demo reels are kind of new. Um, I mean, they, they're not really new anymore, but they're newer in the sense of like animation demo reels have been around forever, but rigging demo reels are now around. So if you wanted to get into rigging, I would say create a rigging demo reel as best you can. Because what that does is it gets you past the HR department because they would say oh here's something that i'm not sure about <laughs> okay they can look at it for face value and say this is entertaining or not but they don't know the technical side so it's going to automatically go directly to the supervisor to say take a look so if you want to bypass a lot of those gatekeepers a demo reel for rigs is pretty good um but if you can't do that if you're already in the animation industry uh i would say talk to your producer and get transferred um into the into the department um, and if you're trying to get in without it, uh, you probably need an animation demo reel anyway. So okay. mm -hmm. when you're creating your demo reel, then do you have any advice there? I guess you would, you would show a little bit of progress on how you build the rig together. Well, I wouldn't be rigging in your demo reel. <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, if I, if I'm putting my demo reel, demo reel yeah. together, that's it. If I'm putting my yeah. demo reel together. Okay. Yeah, if you're putting a demo reel together and you're creating it on the spot, I think that just showing how flexible a rig is is good. I also think that that's where it comes into play. Like if you're if you're rigging, you want to rig as similar as possible to the area that you're trying to get that job in. So like you kind of have to have a little bit of insider information, and okay. that's where you get online and you can ask people or you can you can watch people's videos. I think people are pretty open about where they kind of work, which is a good way to, to judge. 
Okay, to get a sense of what a studio is like and what their best practices are like so you can get a bit more familiar with what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you have any uh, tips on networking like that? Is it usually something where you there'd be a certain platform? Do you reach out on maybe on Discord or on LinkedIn or something like that? Ooh, that's a, a tough question. I think that for networking, yeah, social media, probably the best. Um, I think it's probably more easy to reach out to artists uh, working in studio um, than ever. Uh -huh. Like that's probably your best bet. People are probably a little bit more uncomfortable with making moves like that. I'm, I would be like, that's the harder one for me to move mm -hmm. to make, but I think that's a really good one because uh -huh. um, you might be able to get like direct feedback about the style of what's happening in that studio. Yeah. Um, and that's the best way to do it. Um, not everybody can give you that time, obviously. And, you don't want to be too uh, pushy uh, for getting advice because that's not how you're going to get into the animation oh. industry either. But uh, I do know, I know that there's a book and I have it right here, actually. I just I got to ask you. Yeah. But this, I just picked this up for Christmas and I know Joshua Picker has a book too, but I haven't, I haven't gotten that one yet. But I got this book for Christmas um, and I believe David B. Levy, I, I saw his uh, Toon Boom uh, Twitch stream. Mm -hmm. um, and then this book was also recommended to me um, by someone who worked at Bento Box. So I picked it up and I, uh, you can see that I'm reading it somewhere, my bookmarks there. But uh, this is a fantastic resource. I did not know that this existed. And I'll, I'll plug this book in a little bit, your animation, your career in animation, how to survive and thrive. Uh, this is a fantastic read. And I I couldn't believe I had not heard of this book. It's been out for a little while. So this is a good one. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so that could, it's a good place to start. So before people are able to reach out, there's still there a lot of uh, resources out there. Would those be kind of the main ones so starting kind of with the books and the communities that uh, are out there? Uh, yes, I would say so. I say I think Joshua Pinker's book, Your Animated Journey is also out there, but I haven't read that one. It's, it's on my, it's on my to-do list, on my reading list. And then another book that I really liked, um, this one, I've been, I, I use this one a lot. I keep it by my desk, uh, but the Creativity Inc. Um, and more for supervisors, maybe. Uh, this book is more for supervisors, but I really, really love this book. I've really, um, I've really dug into it and you can see I'm a big I, I destroy books, so when I read them, <laughs> I'm highlighting well. them, and yeah, but like it's all, it's all, uh, all the pages, I've got like so many little uh, folded edges to, to bookmark stuff. This is a fantastic read um, on how Pixar runs uh, and how to talk to artists and how to work together and it's, it's, uh, I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. Yeah, and it's okay. kind of become my, a uh, little bit of a, a Bible <laughs> to, yes. for me. Yeah. Um, so wait, what's your, what would you say, especially now that people are kind of uh, either working remotely or uh, kind of uh, hybrid, is there anything you'd recommend for supervisors? Cause you were a supervisor and now you're, uh, you're building things for people to be able to, uh, to help supervisors and help people get to the next level without that in-person experience. So what, what are you recommending? Um, I recommend that, Oh, that's a tough, that's a tough question. For supervisors, I recommend um, really getting to know your team, um, really getting to know how your individual teammates uh, run and how they function and, and checking up on them. Um, I think that's the best way to consistently hit your deadlines to help them progress in their careers. It can be very, I think it could be, I think that was the hardest part of the pandemic was um, how do you connect with your with your colleagues through these mm -hmm. screens, you really had to learn how to do that all over again. Um, and I think that's probably number one. You want to make sure that you're uh, you're including your whole team in any decision that you're making. Like you're making decisions based on them, so you always want to make the decisions on their best interests, so that okay. they can do the work for you. So I think that's the number one. And, and learning how to do that is the hardest part, but it's it's definitely possible. Yeah. It's definitely there. Okay. Okay. It's, it's doable. It's just, but understanding how you can help them uh, help you to be, so everyone can work together. Mm -hmm. okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And less stress. It'll be less stress on the whole, on the whole team. That's the goal. That's always the goal. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
what's next for you? I mean, you've been pretty busy with the Twitch streams. You have your uh, a lot of new things on your website. What are you uh, thinking of doing for the next couple couple months? Oh, good question. Uh, way to stump me. Um, way to put me on the spot. Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm working with studios. I train studios. I help them optimize their pipelines. Um, I work with teams as well. Uh, and again, supervisors. Uh, I work with supervisors uh, to help them get to know their teams and like help them really realize like some of the questions on how to get in there. Because uh, a lot of times people don't want to talk. They don't want to be put on the spot or they feel like they're put on the spot. But overall, it's such a good it's a good thing for everyone. So I kind of help coach supervisors to 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 get in there and learn who their teammates are and like their special skills to to kind of help make them uh, I don't want to say make them grow, but like give them the tools so that they can do the best job and best work and make sure that they're coming to work happy every day. I think that's okay. that's probably my my biggest goal. Everything kind of revolves around that right now is like, how do I help people go to work and they can just remain happy so that they can do their best jobs. Okay. The human network to the rigging the network. Human network. Yeah. The human network to the rigging network. It's almost okay. the same. Okay. <laughs> There's okay. infinite possibilities. That's what's same about it. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Um, so uh, before we wrap up, uh, I'm wondering if you can kind of let us know where we can find more of the resources that you mentioned. Where would we uh, see more of you and kind of uh, hear about what you're up to and, and all the resources you mentioned? Mm -hmm. um, probably LinkedIn is probably my the best way to, lead, to reach me. Um, my name is Lindsay Noller. You can find me on LinkedIn. Um, I have a website. It's uh, lindsaynoller.ca. Uh, and then on Twitch and Instagram, YouTube, and Gumroad, I use the handle uh, Lindsday K. So Lindsday K, it's a little bit of a spelling error, uh, pronunciation error um, that I am quite fond of. Okay. Uh, and I use that for all my socials. Okay. Is there a story behind that? Um, yeah, I guess so. It's <laughs> It was the when I was working for Toon Boom Traveling, it was uh, the mispronunciation of my name, and I just loved it. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of kept it. It became Lynn's Day. So there was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, so Friday, Monday. Lynn's Day. That works. Uh, yeah. And that kind of stuck. Mm -hmm. Okay. It stuck. Is there anything else that you wanted to uh, tell the viewers before we wrap up? Um, no, I, I would love to, well, I should say yes. Um, I'd love to hear more if people are using my, my rigs or if they're using these tutorials um to let me know if i could do better uh, that's pretty much my my thing um, i'm always trying to put out the best quality material for people to learn these skills so if there's uh, something that i could be doing better i'd love to know nice. yeah and we'll be able to find you on uh your twitch streams right yeah twitch every tuesday from 4 to 6 p.m est okay well then i'll probably see you there um, so thank you, everyone. So we really appreciate you guys uh, joining the session with Lindsay Noller. Uh, thanks for joining us again uh, for their ATE sessions, and we'll probably see you at the next uh, uh, session. Take care.